Hello! Today I want to talk about the North Coast MSK007 Leapfrog Near Elliptic Low Pass. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a uh, Eurorack modular low pass filter with an incredibly steep cutoff. Uh, it cuts off high frequencies like a razor blade, and I'm going to talk in this video about why that's interesting. Um, I'll compare it to a standard first order low pass filter, which is pretty much the simplest low pass filter you can get. Uh, first order means in electrical terms you can build this uh, with one resistor and one capacitor. Uh, so here on the scope we're looking at the filter output in the frequency domain as well as the time domain. The purple trace is the frequency content of the signal, low frequencies to the left and high frequencies to the right. Uh, the yellow trace is the more familiar wave shape, the time domain content of the wave, the actual wiggles that wiggle your speaker cones and make the sounds you hear. So the reason I have the frequency spectrum up is because it illustrates how steep the filter's slope or transition band is. A low pass filter is designed to project high frequencies and the steepness of the slope is how quickly the filter can snap shut on those high frequencies. Um, we're going to look at passing a 400 hertz square wave through the filters and uh, a square wave is interesting because it's a very recognizable shape and it's made of very strong very regularly spaced frequencies um, which you can see here in the purple frequency trace. Uh, here we're looking at the simple filter all the way open uh, so it's letting the whole square wave through. So let's listen to that. Now, let's look at the leapfrog filter. Very different, right? Um, here I have the filter cutoff tuned to the lowest frequency of that 400 hertz square wave. Same wave going into the filter, so we're getting a pure sine wave. Let's hop back to the first order filter again. If I turn the filter down, you'll see two things. One is all of the frequencies go down at once. As I move the filter cutoff up and down, it's almost like you're taking the flat edge of a ruler and pushing them down. And then you see the second thing is as I turn it down, and the voltage dies out, you can see I never really get a pure sine wave at the bottom. It stays triangular and fades out. So let's look at the leapfrog again. So here's the magic of the leapfrog filter. As I turn it up gradually, you can see and hear the individual frequencies that make up the square wave pop in one at a time. So I'll turn the volume up a bit and we'll look at this. So there's the first additional frequency that makes up the square wave. There's the second, and the third, and the fourth, and so on. And you can see, as those additional frequencies come in, the lower frequencies stay rock solid. That's absolutely incredible. It's almost like, if we do this slowly, it's like we're building a square wave from scratch by adding together the individual frequencies that make it up one at a time. And in fact, that's exactly what we're doing. And it has a little distortion around the bottom gives it some character, but we can still pick out that fundamental, that basic frequency of the 400 hertz square wave. Um, let's go down to 100 hertz and compare the wave shape some more. So let's go back to the other filter. There we go. So we've got our 100 hertz filter there. If we turn this simple filter down, 
you can see all the frequencies change at once, but the wave shape itself stays pretty tidy. What we're looking at there as that wave changes shape is we're essentially looking at how fast a capacitor, which is a tiny little battery, a fast battery, how fast that capacitor can leak electrons to get a voltage to where it's supposed to go. That's, that's how a simple filter works. Um, so here, the voltage is able to transition pretty fast. Here it's extremely fast. You know, those corners are sharp. And here it's pretty slow. It takes about uh, a quarter cycle for the voltage to get all the way top and it stays flat. And then it starts pretty quickly to go down, but it gradually gets there. Um, you know, it's almost like how fast can a car take a, take a curve. Um, so to me, the way I think about these filters, oh, and by the way, if you have a slew limiter in your synthesizer, that's exactly how this works. So the, a slew limiter takes a control and makes it either move slowly or move quickly. So the way I think about these two filters in my mind is this filter, the simple first order filter, operates in the time domain. It's how fast can this voltage swing back and forth. But let's go back to the leapfrog. And we'll turn it down to 100 hertz. It's simple in the frequency domain. You can see I just add in those frequencies one at a time and subtract them again. But it's much more complicated in the time domain. You can see what we're doing is we're adding a series of individual wiggles that when you add them up precisely, we'll add one and another and another and as we add those wiggles, we develop a more and more precise approximation of the original square wave that went into the filter. And that's actually uh, what we're describing there is a mathematical theorem called the Fourier transform. Um, and I can put a link to that in the description. Uh, you can read about it on Wikipedia. But this is absolutely fascinating to me. It's essentially an analog filter that operates in the frequency domain. As a computer nerd, I'm accustomed to this kind of processing, frequency domain processing, being done digitally. But here we're doing it completely in the analog domain. So that's why the North Coast uh, Leapfrog filter uh, is a fascinating filter. Uh, I'll produce some more videos and recordings in the future that show more of the musical aspects of the Leapfrog, um, but I hope this was educational. Like I said, I can put some links to further reading in the description, uh, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.